Hey guys, what's going on? Watomar Melon here today, and today I wanted to go over my predictions for um, King's Court Collector Rares. Obviously, these are a little bit more than just shots in the dark. Um, I really looked over the Toon Chaos uh, World Premiere set from last year and tried to compare it to what cards are confirmed in King's Court. Um, we've already received some confirmation, such as Lightning Storm is available as a collector's rare. Um, and I'm, you know, interested to see what else is here. So if you guys do enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll try to make the actual discussion as quick as possible, and then I'll give my overarching, you know, thoughts on King's Court at the end. So uh, I broke down um, what cards appear as collector rares into a couple of different subcategories, such as vintage collector cards, meta-ish reprints, uh, and then on and on. You guys can see those on the left. Um, so for Toon Chaos, there were three vintage collector cards that I would consider collector's cards. <clears throat> the first being Chaos Emperor Dragon, and also Black Luster Soldier and Stardust Dragon. Um, the three of these cards were, you know, what I would consider to be Tier 2. Uh, if you guys haven't seen my video on where I place different cards in the echelon of, you know, how collectible they actually are, if they were to be reprinted, in a higher rarity such as collector rare um i've put these three as you know my tier two and, and in my tier two and you know there's some of the top cards that are available king's court doesn't really stack up super well against toon chaos in this category i think in my opinion that the three vintage collector cards that are going to be reprinted are going to be the wicked gods um dreadroot avatar and eraser they match up quite nicely in the sense that you know we had three in toon chaos and, you know, there are clear three picks for King's Court. You can see at the bottom I have King's Knight, Queen's Knight, and Jack's Knight, and please, Konami, no. Um, those, I think there's a world where these, those do get collector rare printings instead of the Wicked Gods. I think they would be horrible collector rares because they already got um, original first appearance ultimate rares, so I don't think the collector rares would be super collectible. And I think that, you know, these cards aren't ones that, collectors are going to be, you know, jumping over each other to try and collect. Um, so for the meta-ish reprints in Toon Chaos, we had Pot of Extrav, Pot of Desires, and Psy Frame Gear Gamma. Obviously very strong cards. I think uh, the clear one-to-one -one is Extravagance to Lightning Storm, which is already confirmed. Um, so, you know, two spell cards that are extremely powerful in the meta. I mean, I'm not someone who actually plays the game, but I do watch enough videos to know sort of generally what cards are used. Um, I think that Pot of Duality is going to be sort of the comparison with Pot of Desires. Um, I would say real quick, Pot of Duality already has, uh, I believe, an Astral Pack Ultimate Rare. And I think, you know, they probably chose it as a Collector Rare, but I would stay away from this card if, you know... The, the price of it is even close to half of what the ultimate rare is, unless you really want it because you like the way it looks. <clears throat> and then the last card that I picked was Reinforcement of the Army. I mean, I think that's a really cool pick for, you know, their meta-ish reprints. I don't know how common these warrior searchers are, but, you know, I, I think it's a, a card that will do quite well as a collector rare. For the OCG import last time, we had... Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed. I put number F0, Utopic Future Draco. I think that's the, the really hype card that people are excited about for Zodiac. Um, as a backup, I put Golden Eyes Idol. I believe that appeared as a collector rare in the OCG, so I wouldn't be super surprised if that appeared alongside Utopic Future Draco. I'd be very surprised if Utopic Future Draco <coughs> does not appear as a collector rare. Now for the world premieres, this is where the sets really diverge. There's only one clear archetype in King's Court, whereas uh, there were two clear archetypes in Toon Chaos, being Toons and Chaos. Um, so for the Joker, or the, like, I don't even know what the archetype is actually called, but, uh, you know, for the card, playing card archetype, I'll call it, um, I think Arcana Triumph Joker, which is the boss monster, is going to be... Uh, probably a collector rare i'd be you know very very surprised if that was not one i think joker's knight is certainly going to be a collector rare i think the extra deck monster arcana extra joker will also be a collector rare uh and then i was a little bit torn between joker straight and then imperial bower i think this is going to be one of the lower end collector rares um maybe both of them get it i'd be surprised if both of them do not get it 
Um, but I think either or, the highest probability one I think is Joker straight, but Imperial Bower would not be surprising if that was also a collector rare. Uh, and then the remaining slots that were previously um, filled by world premiere cards from the either the Toon or the Chaos archetype, depending on how you look at it, I think that Rescue Rabbit would probably be a decent pick. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think Rescue Cat would have been a much better pick um, because you'd get the rare reprint, <clears throat> which people would definitely like because I think the common version of Rescue Cat is like almost 10 bucks, or maybe it's more than 10 bucks. I know it was like 20 bucks for some time. So I think people really appreciate that reprint. And also the collector rare, I think would do quite well because the highest rarity is like a, I think a turbo pack super. And like, there's also an ultra rare printing. So a collector's rare would be quite nice for that card. Gravekeeper Spy, it's no surprise that Konami has realized that there are some players who play GOAT format who don't wouldn't normally open up um, Konami product and wouldn't normally even consider modern product unless you you reprint these GOAT format cards in higher rarity. And I think they're right that Ga Gravekeeper Spy is a card that's played as a three of in a lot of decks. So, um, you know, I would not be super surprised if people, you know, sort of flock to this card in, in play sets. Number 39, Utopia. I mean, the Astral version, the Astral starlight version in battles of legend from last year i think that's not super accessible and so konami wanted you know this boss monster to have a high rarity printing that was a little bit more accessible and so i wouldn't be surprised and also is actually in like english or whatever language you're playing the card not astral language so i wouldn't be surprised if this card um, gets a collector rare printing and then the last one i picked arcana night joker I don't know if this is going to be a collector rare. I don't feel super confident about this pick, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did get one. Um, you know, it's a boss monster that had been previously around. Uh, so, you know, who knows? And then, as I said before, I have the Please Konami No category uh, filled by the three knight cards, the two vanillas, and then King's Knight. Uh, and then also Guilty Gearfried, the Magical Steel Knight. To me, I don't think collectors would want that card at all. Um... And I think that it's not the most playable card either. So I, I think it would be a huge dud if they made that a collector's rare. So my overall thoughts on King's Court as a whole, I don't think it stacks up super well compared to Toon Chaos. But Toon Chaos, to me, is the gold standard for what a modern set, uh, at least as a collector, should be. Uh, it was It's a ton of fun to open if you've ever opened up Toon Chaos. I've opened up a couple of boxes. I had a blast doing so, and I can't say the same for a lot of sets. Part of that is that collector rares, actually, it feels like you can actually pull them by open on, opening up a couple of boxes, whereas, you know, core sets that have starlight rares, it just feels like, you know, unless I'm opening up a case or more, I don't even have that great a chance of pulling one. And it, you know, once you're opening up a case, it starts feeling like a chore to really churn through these extra boxes. Uh, if you've ever opened up a case, you know what I mean. It's just, it's not super fun to do it. Um, so, you know, I, I enjoy opening up these collector rare sets. I'm looking forward to these collector rares because those are, you know, some of the most enjoyable things for me to collect uh, of modern cards. You know, I don't collect a ton of modern, but I'm definitely not a collector who, you know, refuses to collect modern and, and you know, they, you know, acts all snobby saying that, you know, it's stupid and, you know, it's never going to go up in price, even if it never goes up in price, which, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but uh, I still think that the cards are really beautiful. So, you know, I'm excited for King's Court. Collector rares, I mean, I think the vintage collector's cards are, are probably where, you know, the drop-off is greatest, although I think the world premieres, actually, you know, the world premieres also, I mean... <laughs> Toon Black Luster Soldier was a huge card. Chaos Creator wasn't a huge card, but I still think that's an excellent collector's rare. And I don't think that any of these world premiere cards uh, really stack up well against something like a Toon Black Luster Soldier. The Vintage Collector cards, though, I mean, it's pretty clear. You know, Black Luster Soldier, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Stardust Dragon, I, I don't know if you could come up with, you know... <laughs> many sets of three better cards than those. You know, I know some people were excited and, and wanted the Egyptian God cards to be 
uh, all collector rares, which I think would have been a pretty cool pick. Um, I'm still hoping for Slifer and Obelisk to get Ghost Rare printing so that you can complete the set of Ghost Rare God cards. Um, I think eventually it will happen, but who knows if it happens within the next five years. I mean, I can hope, but who knows. Uh, I'm happy, generally, with the Wicked Gods, but, you know, it's not Toon Chaos. It really isn't. The meta-ish reprints are good. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're a meta, rel someone who actually participates in, in you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! dueling, these days, you know, you know better than I do, but I think Lightning Storm is a decent pick. One thing I will say about Lightning Storm is that its original print Starlight Rare is much higher rarity than the Collector Rare because, one, it's the original print, two, it's harder to pull. So, you know, do I think that this is going to be the great, you know, super collectible card long term? I don't think so in Collector's Rare because there is that original print Starlight. Um, but I think it's going to be, you know, a nice mid-tier or, you know, high-tier rarity. Uh, that's more accessible for a lot of players. And then you also have, presumably, the ultra-rare printing, which will make the card a little bit more accessible for players as well. So, you know, overall, pretty cool set. Probably going to be the best set of the year so far. Doesn't say a whole lot. Um, you know, comparing it to other collector rare set, you have Toon Chaos, which is in a tier of its own. I don't think you're ever going to have a set quite as good as that, uh, any collector rare set quite as good as that, because it really did do everything quite well. Um, but, you know, exciting stuff, and, and hopefully, you know, we, we see where King's Court is going, and it does quite well. Let me know what you guys think about my picks for collector's rare. Um, who knows what happens, uh, but, you know, let me know what you guys think will be collector rare, whether you agree or disagree. Um, yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching. It's been your boy Watts Homer Melon, and peace out.